One of these essential fundamental tools is grounding. Now, pretty much everybody has a sense of what grounding is. Many people think they're grounded. Grounding is something that comes with the body. But as we play in this third dimensional reality of reaction and fear and past and future, many times we lose access to our grounding. We just stop paying attention. And over time, the grounding becomes relatively ineffective because your attention point is in the drama and the noise of the third dimension. But this grounding tool comes with the body. And so recreating it, turning it back on, reinvigorating it, is really a fairly simple thing to do. And it requires your present time attention. Now as you create this and play in this, it's not something you have to give a lot of attention to. But it is something that you want to begin to be more conscious of over the next few weeks, particularly. Just play with this grounding. Just stop yourself and recognize, okay, I'm still grounded. You can create it. You can pay attention to it. You can play with it in lots of ways. So grounding is something that is actually pretty simple. It's an awareness of effectively a line of energy that moves from the first chakra, the tip of the spine at the lower portion of the spine. And it looks like this. It's really simply a line that gets drawn from that first chakra to the center of the earth. Now grounding has been understood in electrical terms for a long time. Farmers used to put metal poles up in order to prevent the lightning to blow up the barn or the house. It simply hit the pole and went into the ground. You've been aware of grounding in for the body. A lot of times you'll get nervous and you'll put your hands under cool water and the body begins to relax. So creating this grounding cord is an intentional action and it's something that coupled with the center of your head and beginning to have a sense of yourself in that fourth layer of thought, you start to put these tools together. But there is a second aspect of grounding that um, really isn't very well understood. And that grounding is all about emotions. Now thoughts are electrical and emotions are magnetic. So why people get ungrounded often is they have all of these thoughts that are very distracting, very unorganized. And so the electricity related to the thoughts kind of bounce all over the place. Hence nervousness in many people. But there's also this emotional aspect. And so we'll talk about this in a little while, but as you hold a thought, and in that erratic, reactionary, third-dimensional state, many times an emotion automatically gets drawn to that thought. Well, that makes me really angry, somebody would say, and they draw the anger to that thought. But in real terms, when you start to get grounded, be in the center of your head, observe from that fourth layer of thought, that's just noise over there. The reaction is, engaging with the noise and then choosing to be angry. An unnecessary choice, far more often than not. So this grounding, when you have a thought electrically and you draw an emotion to it and the emotion is unmanaged, I'm angry, uh, this really infuriates me. Those are reactionary emotions drawn to that thought. So there is a second part to this grounding cord, and it looks like this. It's a coil, and the coil wraps around the grounding cord, the line. And so as you have erratic thoughts, and that emotion that is erratic also, that just gets drawn to the thought, it's kind of scattered thinking and emotions, unmanaged. Both this electrical line and this coil has a tendency to temper that reactive nature. 
as you begin to again get into the center of your head, get grounded, think from the fourth layer of thought, you start to find you have far more choice in managing yourself. So let's play with this grounding chord, we'll call it. Let's create it and let's just begin to see how it works for you. Very, very simple. Just sit back if you would. And eyes open. It's not a meditation. We'll play in a space in a moment where you can really have a sense of it. But what I'd like you to do is just create a mental image picture in your mind of a line. Just kind of see a line. It might be a colored line. It might be or a chain, a pipe, a long tree root. And to sit back in the chair and actually go ahead and close your eyes. And would you become aware of the tip of the spine at the lower end of the spine, that first chakra area? And if you had an imaginary third hand and an imaginary third arm. Now this is where you just get to play, but notice what you notice. That image that you've created, would you oh, reach up and just grab that line, that tree root, that chain, and would you reach around underneath you and would you connect it, have an intention to connect it right to the tip of the spine? kind of feel this motion because this is that imaginary third hand, third arm, is really part of your etheric body, you know, what many people call the astral body. But this is a very real aspect of you. You can kind of have a sense of pretend, allow pretend, allow imagination to be part of an awareness of something that very much exists, mostly is denied. And just have a sense of connecting it to that first chakra, that grounding cord, and then let go and drop the line to the center of the earth. The center of the earth is really not very far away. Just have a sense of making a connection. Now take a breath. And would you relax your butt? It's just like you kind of let go of a tension. Relax the muscles in your thighs, in your butt. Take a breath and then would you have an awareness of all of the electricity that is disconnected, random thoughts, thoughts that it don't even belong to you and just begin to let them ground off. It's very much like putting your hands under water. And the body relaxes. Just have a sense of releasing that which does not belong to you. And another breath. Now would you also just bring yourself into the center of your head if you're not there. Notice if you're thinking about this, would you stop thinking about it and just be aware of it? It's a different space. It's a perception versus emotion. It's a quieter awareness, fourth layer of thought. Now you're observing. We're just playing. And again, just notice the body. Is it relaxing? All that's occurring is you've redirected your attention to this grounding and everything that is erratic, a little bit off balance, has a charge to it, an electrical charge, begins to just flow down the grounding. Electricity will follow the path of least resistance. So if you can direct the erratic energies, it begins to create a comfort in the body. Now we're just playing with the electrical piece for a moment. Now, 
just without going to this thought, just think the number of times where you went into reaction or you overreacted. Something was said and you immediately had the thought that went into the reaction. But would you also remember the emotion that just kind of popped right up, became very engaged? This makes me really angry. Now, just from here, just also notice that many times that reaction was simply a reaction. It was not necessary. It wasn't a choice, but it was a reaction. Would you like to manage that space where you can begin to step out of reaction? This grounding center of the head allows that first step. Now another breath. Now again, just be aware of that grounding line. And this time we're going to create the second part of the grounding cord, which is a coil. And it just wraps around that line. Now, all you want to be doing is just giving the direction to the coil. Just tell it to wrap itself around this line and connect to the center of the earth. About a lot of this, these tools, is they're simple. They know exactly what to do when you tell them what to do. So wrap that coil, take a breath. In fact, notice you may have the body took a breath it stepped into another state of relaxation. Now this is where words like worry and that future anticipation, the emotion of anticipation or worry, those are future events that aren't even here yet. And yet we're worrying about things quite often that more often than not don't even happen. And yet we're in this constant state of anxiety or worry off balanceness. So another breath and would you just find a sense of worry, confusion, concern, anticipation, words like that. And just notice yourself, are you in any of those about a future event that could happen in a very different way, positively? And with a breath, would you just let that anxiety ground off the body? I'm using big words like worry and anxiety, anticipation. But many times there's many subtle emotions. And many of these subtle emotions are structured around those gifts. You're not okay. You're never really going to succeed because. And so there's this accepted belief in that message, I'm not okay. There are many subtle worries or emotions that are believed in the message that are very incorrect. Now just take another breath relax a little bit more into this grounding. Would you be aware of yourself in the center of your head? Now, I know this is all new. We're just beginning to point 
an awareness at it. That fourth layer of thought where you are managing your attention point quietly. You're conscious, you're aware, and would you find that emotion that you choose, appreciation, happy, just some simple emotion. And then just relax your body again and just have a knowing that many of these thoughts and emotions that have nothing to do with you, they're not yours, but they are reactions to that third dimensional world. They may be protecting you, they may be creating an anticipation of not connecting to something I'm worried about, I'm unsure about. Much of that protective nature of emotion is based on those gifts, you're not okay, which really aren't accurate. Just have a, an awareness. Notice that that grounding cord is becoming activated. Now, even go one step further. Would you tell the grounding cord to become engaged, kind of expand? Draw that electricity that's unmanaged from the body. Now, would you be aware of yourself and take a breath without changing the grounding, without moving from the center of your head, without changing your awareness in this quieter fourth layer of thought, would you just allow your eyes to open, see the room, but don't go to the room, just kind of be aware, it's, there it is. Another breath. And then what I'd like you to do is continue to be this aware, but just stand up. Feel your feet on the floor, that's a silly thing, but feel your feet on the floor. Kind of just wait one foot and then the other foot. It's as if you're just rocking back and forth. Find a stability. Just bend your knees slightly and find a stability. Now, just be aware of yourself, being aware. Kind of open up your toes. Feel your feet on the floor. And as you're grounded, there's a sense of this stability, of firmness, uh, a heaviness, possibly. You begin to have a weight in the body. It's like, here I am. In fact, it's exactly that. Here I am. You are beginning to occupy the body in just a very simple way where much of that worry, that anticipation, that anxiety, that anger, frustrations, those emotions, many times are other people's fears. This is the energy that knocks you out of the body. And when you try to get back in, you can't get all the way back in because the energy of you're not okay, you don't deserve, is sitting right there. As you begin to ground both the emotions and the thoughts, much of this energy is old. It makes no sense. It doesn't even have any rational structure to it. It's just 
static electricity and emotion. So as you feel your feet on the floor, you have that sense of I like me, that sense of the positive emotion. Notice how your head seems to get a little clearer. These are great tools. Why they're great is because they allow you to stabilize, begin to define yourself. This next tool we're going to play with with the rose allows you to define, this is me, stable, grounded, aware, present, with choice. And that theater out there really is for my entertainment but I don't have to go to it to experience it, unless I choose. So one more breath, notice yourself. Now over the next couple days, coupled with center of your head, awareness from that fourth layer of thought, being grounded. Again, when you're driving your car, it's a great place to find this space, because it's you in the car and it allows you to get very clear. But these are tools for walking around. These are tools that allow you to be surprised by somebody's abruptness, somebody's odd words, and then respond, rather than being knocked out of your space. So grounding is something that you pay attention to, you can drop your grounding cord, you can let it go, notice how that feels, and then you can instantly re-ground. It's a place to play also to become more familiar. So, tremendous tool, it's part of who you are, and it gives you an opportunity to remember yourself. Let's move on to this next tool, this use of the rose.